Hello and welcome to the show that is all about the restoration of model trains. All of these models have been mistreated, worn out, or else just left to rot. My job is to make them look presentable and also get them working so that these forgotten models can be enjoyed once again. But there is a catch. Each repair job has a time limit, and that is decided by the all knowing Timomatic machine. If the time runs out before the repairs are complete, then the trains will be left to the mercy of the evil scrap man. Welcome back to Salvage or Scrap. Well, we are back for one final visit. So let's take a look at this season's very last total tank engine. Busted boiler. Poorly pannier. All right, all right. So the final loco of the series is this Holby 57XX Great Western Pannier tank engine from 1977 that cost me just 19 pounds. Let's take a closer look at this 45-year-old tank engine to see what the problems might be. This loco is utterly filthy. It looks like it's been kept out in somebody's garden somewhere. Nevertheless, under all of the filth, the parts do seem to be all there. The only major problem is this crushed front coupling, which almost makes me think that the loco was dropped on its front end, but this probably means that I will end up replacing both of the couplings with some nice new modern ones. So cosmetically, it's definitely going to need a bath, but I don't think there's too much work to do there. So does the loco work? Let's test it for the first time and find out. <coughs> Right, so there was a little bit of a buzz and I, don't, I think the wheels might have twitched. It's still on full power though and it's definitely not going anywhere. So let's just give it a wiggle. But no, the loco is at the moment totally dead. So that's another dead loco. Let's try cutting the power and swapping the direction. All right, full power. No, change direction again. Let's give it another wiggle. Right, so nothing I can do at the moment is producing any sign of life. So hopefully we haven't just seen this loco swan song. Hopefully there will be something I can do to bring this back from model train heaven. So it is another dead loco, which means every loco in this series has had a serious mechanical problem. Although I guess that is sort of the idea, isn't it? Anyway, let's find out how long have I got for this repair challenge. time matic if you will. Oh, okay, 25 minutes. So 25 minutes is always really tight when you don't know what the problem is with a loco. Except this time I've got to clean it within that time and I've also got to print some new couplings. So that does not leave me very long to find out what's wrong with it. So I'm gonna have to start 3D printing straight away, get that body off, get it cleaned, get it drying, and then spend the rest of the time troubleshooting the mechanism and hoping that there's nothing too seriously wrong with it. I'm gonna go and prepare, please do wish me luck. Let's see how the final salvage or scrap locomotive turns out. Remember, the rules are that I'm not allowed to shop online for any replacement parts. I can use parts that I already have in my own stores or I can 3D print brand new ones, but anything made this way must be printed within the time limit. So here we are at the very final operation, the pannier tank. Is this thing going to be okay again after 25 minutes? Well, I don't know, but there's nothing more I can do in preparation. So, time matic machine, 25 minutes please, let's get started. By now, you probably know the drill. I'm starting this repair by cranking up the 3D printer and having some brand new couplings made. And let's get the body off and go downstairs and try and clean the thing. Now the screw is sneakily hidden this time in the side. 
All right, can we get that out? Okay. So, first look inside. Anything obvious to notice? No, <laughs> it looks actually pretty good and clean. So a clean mechanism should make this repair much faster, but I've still got a dirty body to deal with. <laughs> I sure do. Okay, so this one is really quite filthy. So I'm thinking a little bit of the old soap and toothbrush will make a massive difference to this before I've even looked at it mechanically. So let's get some of this dirt off. Okay, I think that will have to do. I don't have time for any more cleaning. So let's get it rinsed. Right, wow, that looks absolutely mint, that does. Right, let's go and dry it. And can I just say what a wonderful job this fan heater has done this series. It's cooked all of my locos in double quick time. And with 21 minutes still on the clock, let's pull this motor out and see if there's anything to be done to fix it. Well, I'm getting good at this. You probably know the drill for this sort of loco now. It's very similar to the 040 we did. Okay, motor is out. Let's take a closer look. All right, so yeah, there is some guff all over it. Uh, I noticed there's some hair wrapped around the armature, so that won't be helping. All right, that's gone. Let's get the worst of the dirt off the commutator before I use the wire wheel on it. The dirty commutator and the hair are actually good discoveries, as they're possible reasons why the loco isn't working. You don't ever want to open a dead engine and find nothing wrong, because how do you fix something that doesn't appear to be broken? Oh, I tell you what, I'm like a well-oiled machine now with these. And hopefully in around 20 odd minutes, this pannier tank will be a well-oiled machine as well. As before, all the electrical contacts need to be thoroughly cleaned in order to conduct electricity properly. All right, very nice. So how is the magnet on this motor? Yeah, pretty weak, so that's going to need recharging. I think that will make a big difference to it. But first, let's finish cleaning up this commutator. And according to the timer-matic, there is just less than 18 minutes left. So I think, I think I'm on target here, but there's definitely no time to mess about. All right, let's get that magnet recharged then. One weak magnet, yet another reason why this loco isn't working properly. That's another thing that I can fix quite easily. Is that better? It should be better. Oh yeah, look at that. That is what you call a strong magnet now. Awesome. Reassemble, reassemble, reassemble. Still don't know if this motor works yet, and that is worrying when there's about a quarter of an hour left. Brush number one into position, and brush number two into position. And once this is in, we'll get some power to this motor and find out for the first time whether it's actually going to work. Would somebody get this motor some juice, please? Okay, here we go. Oh dear, no sign of life. It did work, and then it stopped. But with a little coaxing, the motor slowly came back to life. Doesn't seem the happiest motor in the world, I have to say. But it does seem to be working, so I think we'll persevere with it, we'll persevere. If the loco is poorly when it comes to cleaning the wheels, then there might be more to do. I might have to replace the motor but we still have to take a look at the chassis itself. So I think what I'll do is remove the couplings because these are gonna have to be replaced anyway. So the couplings can go, don't care what happens to those, but I will need the screws, so take care of those. Okay, base keeper plate, that can come off. If the motor is a little on the weak side, I desperately need to make sure the wheels are turning freely with no tight spots or friction. So thorough cleaning and lubrication will be very important here. So the pickups do look a little bit dirty and they don't seem to be adjusted perfectly either. So let's make sure those are clean. Now these are quite corroded, which suggests they have not been used in a while. If a loco has been run recently, there wouldn't be any rust on the pickups where it makes contact. Okay, so those are clean. Let's get some oil onto those axles. All right, how's that? That's looking better. Let's put some oil on the coupling rods. So I reckon this loco, I think this one was probably quite well looked after back in its day because it's not that filthy on the inside. It's not so good on the outside, so I think it's just been left somewhere bad. But inside, where it's been protected from the elements, I would say there's good evidence here that this was a well-loved and well-looked after locomotive. 
So again, that's that's another good reason why you would want to get this thing going. All right, base keeper back in position. The 3D printer is gonna have to get a wiggle on. I'm actually doing the same 3D print that I did for the princess, but annoyingly, I can't remember how long that took. So we'll just have to hope that it's in time, but I think the, the princess was a short one, wasn't it? So it should be, it should be, uh, it should be done before I need it. Right, let's screw the motor into position. I need the wire under that screw, otherwise the capacitor won't be connected. You don't really need the capacitor, but I found that it uh, protects the motors a little bit, reduces arcing a touch. All right, good. Let's lubricate the worm drive. A little bit of silicon grease on there. Very nice, lovely stuff, but you wouldn't want to eat it. And now let's power up the loco and see if we can get this to work. Fingers crossed, please, everybody. Fingers crossed. On the first assembled test, there seems to be something not quite right. Okay, so there seems to be some sort of debris between the wheels and the chassis, which is causing a short circuit. So it's some sort of wear and tear metal filing, I think. And this pickup is touching the chassis almost at times, so that needs to be cured. Right. Problem, we need to get the base keeper plate off again. That pickup is still not in the right position. Hmm, this is annoying. Right, let's see if that's better. Let's get the base keeper back in place and let's try it again. Time is running out, there's just 11 minutes left. So <laughs> this is gonna have to resolve itself pretty darn quickly if I'm gonna pass this challenge. All right, try again. Yeah, that's all right. That's well out of the way now. Okay, good, goggles and let's clean the wheels. Doesn't seem to be a great deal of torque here, so I hope there isn't a serious problem with the motor. Probably not in brilliant condition, but hopefully it's good enough to pass the challenge. So, with a little more cleaning and a little more running, the short circuit seems to be clear, and the motor is running properly again. All right, that's done. And I've just heard the new couplings finish, so that's good. And I reckon as the Loco's running, it's even speeding up and picking up power. In fact, that's surprisingly good torque. If a loco had a problem with the motor, I would expect the speed to drop very dramatically when I applied pressure with a cotton bud like that, but it did not do that. So I think this loco has just been sleeping for many years, and this short run, which has only been a few minutes, has really brought it back to life. Okay, I think the wheels are now pretty much clean. Very nice. Okay, stop, and let's get that body and see about refitting it. Right, is it dry? Oh, yes, it is. It looks good, that. Yeah, nice looking body now. That's fantastic. How good is that? Put the body back on. And then that really annoying screw, which to avoid messing about with, I'm just going to put it in the claws of my pliers and maneuver it into place and screw it in. <laughs> Very cool. And let's go and grab those couplings and put them on. The new couplings are finished, so all that's needed now is for them to be reassembled and then fitted to the locomotive. Okay, all right, couplings. Let's put these together. The reliability of that 3D printer is just outstanding. Look at these, such good, perfectly usable couplings. Um, might be a little bit of a problem that they, they can't pivot. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you'll be able to couple any large wheelbase wagons, but I personally just like seeing these uh, more modern couplings. Uh, but if these aren't any good, I suppose you could change them back again. And then there's time for just a quick test by apply applying power to the wheels just to verify. And then I think we're done. And yes, they are. Okay, Timomatic, please do stop that countdown. Six minutes and 51 seconds remaining. And that is it for the locomotive. The pannier tank, I think, will now work when we take it to the workshop, but let's get it there now and double check. Here is the awesome classic Triang pannier tank back in the workshop after a ridiculous 18 minutes and nine seconds worth of repair work. We are just about ready for that final chuffing inspection, but first, here's a reminder of what this loco looked like before the repairs. The loco was more or less complete to begin with, but it was very, very dirty, and of course it was suffering from a broken coupling, and these couplings are very old-fashioned anyway. 
When tested, the Loco was completely dead, showing absolutely no signs of life during any of the testing. And this is the final result. The main thing that was done to this bodywork was just a good clean, and that has made a massive difference. As you can see though, both the front and the back of the Loco have nice modern tension lock couplings, which make this locomotive much more compatible with modern rolling stock. So this Loco is cosmetically very strong, but of course it was to start with. The real question mark is over the performance. Does this Loco now work? So to find out, let's initiate that final test. <coughs> And she is off, oh yes. So we have another Loco which has been restored to working order. In fact, look how stable this Loco is. A lot of them tend to wiggle around on this rolling road. This one is just perfectly controlled. So that is such a massive difference. Trying Pannier Tank back in working order again. I am so happy with that, such a good smooth performer now. And that of course does mean that this loco is officially salvaged and safe from the evil scrap man. Let's take one final look at the ranking for this season of salvage or scrap and as you can see I finally managed to beat the princess time by over a minute which is crazy. It also means that this engine is fit to return to a model railway. And if you'd like to own this locomotive, it is now listed on eBay. So you can visit the links down in the description for your chance to own this newly salvaged loco. For the time being though, that will just about do it for this season of Salvage or Scrap. If you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see more, then feel free to watch the other episodes, like them, leave comments on them, and tell your friends, because if there's demand there for another season, I might well return. For now though, job done and I might see you again one day on Salvage or Scrap.